Okay, I think we will get started. Can you hear me at the back all right? Not really? Can I have a little bit more volume? Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the HST Public Forum here in Kelowna. My name is Jim Hamilton. I'm the president of Okanagan College and I'm pleased to be moderating this evening's activities. First of all, I'd like to welcome you all to our campus. Um, and I, I think we have probably everybody who's coming, but a few more come in, we do a few, a few more seats. Okanagan College is proud to host this forum, which is part of the series of 11 public sessions being held in 10 BC communities before the HST referendum. Now we are here as a result of the Public Dialogue Fund, which was created by the Government of British Columbia. The fund is independently administered by BC's universities, colleges, and institutes. Three associations representing BC's post-secondary institutions are responsible for organizing these forums. They are BC Colleges, of which I am part, the BC Association of Institutes and Universities, and the Research Universities Council of British Columbia. Our goal here tonight is to hold informative, respectful public dialogue before British Columbia votes in the referendum. This forum is organized in a deliberately impartial way. I am here to facilitate the discussion to ensure the speakers have a chance to present their views equally and audience members have the opportunity to participate in the dialogue and ask questions. Now it is our practice here at Okanagan College to encourage open but civil discussions. And that means that we all need to allow the speakers to complete their comments, not interrupt, not speak over top of them, and keep the heckling down to a moderate level. Now, I have two weapons in my arsenal to ensure that we keep the peace. The first is the Okanagan College gavel. Should this not work, I have brought along a, a, another instrument which seems actually to be perfectly appropriate at this time of the year. <laughs> because this is not only a hockey stick, it's not just any hockey stick, this is a Vancouver Canucks hockey stick. Right, and it's signed by Ryan Kessler. And I am sure that Ryan Kessler would not want any of us to end up in the penalty box this evening. <laughs> so I, this is my plea, and I'll put my stick back here, and nobody take it, because I think its value is increasing with every game that passes. Back to the script. Um, okay, so we ask that you keep your uh, questions short this evening so we can get to as many people as possible. And... One, one other piece of advice. The focus is on questions, not speeches. Um, so, and one final uh, piece of uh, keeping order. If there are disruptions, we'll ask you twice to be respectful. And if the situation continues to occur, the person will be asked to leave. Represent representatives from two groups that have been successful in their request for public funding to advance their views about the referendum will be speaking at this forum. The two official sides are the Fight HST Society, the yes side, supporting a referendum vote to return to the PST GST. And the Smart Tax Alliance, or the no side, supporting a referendum vote to retain the HST. We're here to provide a platform for discussion and encourage dialogue so British Columbians can make an informed decision in the HST referendum. At this time, I'd like to introduce the people who will be speaking this evening. Representing the Smart Tax Alliance, we have Peter Leach. Peter is the chair of the Motion Picture Industry Association. We have Heather Weber, at the far end of the table, who is an accountant at NNP. Um, and then we also have Christine Dendy, who is a member of the Okanagan Kootenai Cherry Growers Association owner of Dendy Orchards and treasurer of the BC Agricultural uh, Council. So that is the Smart Tax Alliance group. And representing the Fight HST group this evening, we have Bill Vanderzam and Chris Delaney. 
Now, it also, you may have noticed the person off to the side here, but we, we will have two um, signing uh, uh, folks, uh, language people for uh, deaf audience members and for those who are watching us online. And they will be operating off to the side of the stage as the evening progresses. And thank you for coming to do that. Each side will make a, an opening presentation of up to 10 minutes. And following the initial presentations, then each side will provide a five-minute rebuttal, and then we'll proceed to questions from the audience here and online. And I invite you to address any questions you may have to one of our presenters or to all of the presenters. If you do not want to, to uh, speak your question out loud at the microphone, you can write your questions on sheets of paper. Uh, who's got the sheets of paper? Okay, see the people who are waving their hands at you, wearing the black shirts and the red lanyards with the name tags? Those are the folks who have the cards that you may wish to use. Um, they will collect them throughout the evening, and we will read out as many of those questions as we have time for at the end when we get to the question period. And we will also have some questions that are being submitted online. We have folks who are keeping an eye on that too. Before we get started, and I'm almost finished the opening remarks, which may actually be longer than the 10 minutes we've given either side. <laughs> um, before we get started, um, I'd like to remind everyone that this forum can be seen on the internet at www.hstpublicforums.ca. And I think that's behind me on the screen. Now, so everybody can hear the discussion, we don't get any unwanted um, technical interruptions. Uh, we ask you to set your phones to vibrate or just not use them uh, during the presentation. But if you wish to, you can keep those devices going and we encourage you to tweet your views and impressions of what you hear tonight. For this forum, you can use the Twitter hashtag pound HST Kelowna. The washrooms in this building are located if you go out in the back of the theater and go off to the left down the hallway, you'll see the washrooms. The exits are located, as you can see, under the exit signs, that seems an appropriate place to have exits located, um, along both sides of the theater, and that will take you out back out into the foyer should you need to go there. So let's get started. Uh, the order of tonight's presentations was done by a flip of the coin back at the first forum in Dawson Creek. The sides have been taking turns for the order of the presentation. Each side will make their presentation, and as I said, there will then be a rebuttal and then back to the questions. The Smart Alliance side is first up today, and I will ask Peter Leach to begin their presentation of 10 minutes. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Peter Leach. I'm a small businessman in North Vancouver. Uh, we run two significant film studios there. Um, we employ about <clears throat> 13 people directly and another, we've got another about seven people that are part-time workers at our studio. But I think the biggest thing is we facilitate about a thousand jobs, um, workers that work out of our facilities. So uh, while we service the industry, we have a si significant impact on the industry. The one thing where both sides are going to agree on tonight is this was maybe the worst introduction of a tax that we've had in the history of British Columbia. Um, it was brought in terribly. Nobody knew what was going on with it. Um, it was very poorly explained and we didn't have any background information on it to be able to make a decision whether this was a good tax or a bad tax. <clears throat> the one thing we do know, of course, is that um, the HST came in. Uh, it replaced the GST and PST system and you know we all knew that the PST system is a system that was brought in in the 1940s. It's antiquated. The world has changed. Um, we are much more of a global economy now. Um, most of the jobs that we're going to have 10 years from now are going to be quite different than a lot of the jobs we have now. So we have to adapt to new policies when necessary and certainly the PST was old, antiquated, and it was a hindrance to creating jobs in British Columbia. In just over a month, British Columbians have the rare opportunity to become finance minister for the day. This is a very serious decision to make. This is going to be the future of jobs for your neighbors, your friends, your family, your children, your grandchildren. Um, this is a very important decision. I think it's very important that people c become informed of the facts of the differences between the HST 
and going back to the PST and GST system. Do you want to choose a system that was brought in 1949, or do you want to choose a 21st century system that is much more efficient, that creates jobs, and I think that's what we want to do. Let's talk a little bit about the advantages. First of all, with the recent changes, the rate has dropped from 12% on 80% of the goods and services that we had down to 10%. So this is a savings for every single family. The average savings now, once this is fully implemented, will be $120 per family. That's very significant. The other fact is that the low income earners are going to benefit the most. Over a million people get an HST rebate right now. That will continue as, long, as well as we'll have the lower rate. So this is absolutely going to save families money. The only people that are going to be paying more under the new HST is the rich. That's a fact. Let me talk a little bit about some of the advantages. For companies, the return to PST, GST would make BC exports less competitive and dampen business investment. This is from the independent panel report. If the HST system continues, the economic benefits will build slowly. So we're not necessarily going to notice lower prices overnight, but we will notice lower prices over time. If the HST is left in place by 2020, we'll receive a $2.5 billion increase in the total economy, 1.1% in higher growth. That's $480 per person. This is going to create a minimum of 24,000 jobs. Just to give you a perspective on that, the film industry in British Columbia, which is an important economic driver for the province, has 20,000 direct jobs and 15,000 indirect jobs. So this is a huge benefit for employers. And I'd like to turn it around to Christine to give you a little bit more information. Thank you very much. Good evening, and it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Christine Dendy. I'm a local orchardist. Uh, I'm also a mother and a grandmother, so I pay HST as well as having a business here. Uh, I'm not a particularly proficient political speaker, so please bear with me if I'm a little bit nervous. Um, what I'd like to talk to you a li little bit about is my experience as a small business person locally uh, and, and how that impacts our business, where the HST impacts us. What the province decides to charge tax on or the rate that it should charge is not what this referendum coming up and this debate is about tonight. The referendum is about keeping the HST sales tax collection system versus reverting to the old provincial sales tax system and that is what the referendum question is. So I think that's what we should be talking about, those systems. Then the BC government, after many years of struggling with a poorly designed and administered archaic tax system, decided to join the, rest, the trend of the rest of Canada in adopting a harmonized tax system and eliminating the duplication of collection systems and administering and auditing. And that's efficient. It's cost effective to administer and it's fair. The old PST was totally unfair in that the businesses which made and sold goods and services had to pay PST on their operating costs, and that tax was then hidden and embedded in the costs of those goods and services at retail. So either the price needed to be higher than it should be, or else the businesses had to absorb that cost. And what Mr. Van der Zam and the Fight HST group did not tell you about the HST, from my perspective as a local BC food producer, is that HST is actually very fair to farmers. The food is supposed to be tax exempt in British Columbia, but under the PST, farmers were charged PST on a lot of the cost to produce it. And under the HST, the farmers get the HST refunded on the input costs of farm production. That's fair. HST is efficient. We used to have 5% GST and 7% GSPST, and two totally different government tax collection and audit bureaucracies to administer each program. Now we have one, and businesses have a simplified system to account for it. That saves me money, it's much easier for my accounting. It's quick, easy, and it's transparent. The HST is cheap, and it's getting cheaper. It's gonna go from 12% down to 10%. And the HST system certainly helps us be more competitive in export markets. The provincial sales tax should not be charged to produce 
to produce goods which are sold outside the province. And under the old PST system, we paid PST on some production costs even when our produce was being exported. Under HST, all the sales tax and inputs are refunded and the HST is not going to solve the problems of a weak US dollar, we know that, and it's not going to solve the failings of the European economy, but it certainly makes our economy stronger than it was under the old PST system. And the HST is simple, transparent, and understandable. For in agriculture, under the PST, retailers had to track and train sales staff to determine when PST was chargeable and when it was exempt. Businesses were audited, fined, and they had to pay the tax themselves when they made mistakes. As a result of that, a lot of businesses started to actually refuse to honor the exemption for farmers. It was quite unfair on both parties. Farmers had to have proof that they were eligible and file claims to recover PST when it was charged incorrectly. And under the PST, although the policy intent was and is that food should not be taxed nor the farm inputs to cost to produce it, the system was based on a long and very detailed list of items that the government considered tax exempt. It was archaic, nonsensible, outdated, inflexible, and unfair. For example, disinfectants for cleaning equipment and facilities for packing cherries were considered exempt if used in one part of my packing shed, but they were taxable when used on the other side of the wall in another part of the packing house for cooling fruit. Refrigeration equipment for cooling cherries was PST exempt when purchased as a unit from the refrigeration contractor, but if I bought all the components or was doing the repairs, all the parts were considered taxable. It made absolutely no sense. I have pages and pages of ridiculous examples which, which I could go through, but it's, it's far too long. And we have somebody else to speak here, so I'll pass you over to Heather Weber, who is the CA tax expert, who can much better explain the details. Hi, thank you very much for coming out and uh, giving us the opportunity to uh, present the no uh, vote side. So how, how does the HST impact BC? Um, the HST helps to create jobs and as an accountant here in the Okanagan I have the opportunity to work with uh, businesses and individuals uh, both in large and excuse me large and small businesses and so I get to see uh, firsthand how uh, the HST has impacted our local businesses. I, I can't tell you how many uh, clients I had phone me during tax season when they were going to file their annual uh, GST, HST return and realized all of a sudden that they were getting the whole 12% back. So it, it makes a big difference to a business when it's able to get that tax that it was previously paying as PST on the goods and services to operate their business when they're able to recover that. Our uh, businesses here in the Okanagan, they uh, not only provide uh, services and goods to us here, but they also provide goods and services globally. And so in order to help those businesses compete, we need to have a fair, efficient tax system. Thank you. And thank you for only being like 12 seconds over a lot of time. Um, <laughs> I just need to reset the timer here. And um, at this point, then, I will ask the uh, Fight HST side to start off with uh, their 10 minutes. And I believe, Bill, are you going to be? So Bill van der Zem will be the first speaker. So it's just a little over two years ago that during an election, the government said no, HST was not up for consideration. I wasn't surprised because every government in BC since the time of Bill Bennett had been approached to take on the HSD by the federal government. They wanted us to take this on. They're hoping perhaps one day it might be a universal tax, starting with Canada possibly, and then taking in Europe as it already has it, and perhaps the US as well. Maybe one day, instead of paying Ottawa, we'll be paying Belgium, and then Belgium will send the check back, who's to say? But that's how it started. So I wasn't really too worried when I heard during the election that HSD was not up for consideration. I foolishly believed it. And it wasn't too much after, just a few months after, when we were told, yes, there had been an agreement reached between the government of Canada and the government of BC for BC to adopt the HSD. And we were told, of course, the HSD was a great thing because it was going to help business, and it was going to uh, create jobs, 
It was going to bring down prices, and it was going to create economic activity, and that the people really wouldn't mind paying that extra few billion dollars a year because they would get the benefit in the end. That was the story. And it was shortly after that, right after that, when we started to develop Fight HST, bring in 6,000 volunteers who went out on street corners in the rain and snow and sleet and wind to collect 700,000 plus signatures. And polls were being done and the polls were telling the government that 85% of the people opposed the HST. That was the polls. But the government continued on saying, no, we know better. Really, they didn't represent the constituents. They wanted this to go ahead because that had been their plan and they were just not going to stop. They were going to head the head. The premier at the time said, we don't care how many people signed a petition. We're going ahead with the HST. So we were successful and that required government to take the petition and act upon it in committee and decide whether they wanted to deal with it in the legislature and have their constituents see how it is they voted or whether they would take it to an initiative vote in September. And the decision, as you might expect, was made to not deal with it in the legislature. That would be too embarrassing and that would perhaps be too, uh, too visible for the constituents. Instead, they would have the vote in September. So that went on for a time again, stall after stall. I was hoping it would go away. I've been at it for two years, as has Chris and a lot of other people. And we were hoping it would come to an end, but the government took the approach that if we wait long enough, the people will eventually give up. They'll say, what's the use? Let's just go with it. We'll give up. So that didn't happen. We continued on. We didn't give up. So then the premier told me when I met the new premier, look, we're going to provide you a level playing field and we're going to have each side have its say. We fight HD representing the 700,000 plus people that signed and a whole lot more that didn't get to sign but wanted to sign and the other group representing largely, totally perhaps, the business community. So each of us was given so a so-called level playing field. But before they did that, the government changed the rules for the Referendum Act so that unlike the Initiative Act where you're limited as to the amount of money you can spend, we were each allotted $250,000. And we have to go out on behalf of the people and advertise throughout the province, which is very expensive. We can't go near television. That's far too expensive. But we have to go out and try to get the message to you as to why it is you vote yes to extinguish the HSD with 250,000. So Chris and I have started by traveling the province and we stay at the more reasonable motels and hotels and we don't eat big meals, we keep the cost down. But the other side has the business, the big corporate sector helping out. There, you've seen the glitzy ads, ads on television. Hey, they cost a ton of money. They can spend millions. And the government's come along, and they too threw in $5 million for the stickman ads. But it doesn't stop there. They're going to spend another $5 million of your tax dollars, basically telling you you need the HST. Now we're being told, and you've seen the brochure you came in, that even though we're going to take an extra $2.8 billion out of your pockets every year, you're really saving money. You're really saving money. It's a good deal for you. They say 10% is less than 12%. Yeah, I, I can understand that. But 10% on everything, including your services, is a whole lot more than 12% on a limited number of items. So again, we're getting stories that are rather unbelievable. But the government's come along and said, you know, they told us at the beginning, there's no way we can change this. We've entered into an agreement with Ottawa. We've got to stick to it. There's no way we can change it. It's, it's there. That's it. No changing it. But now they're in trouble. So now they're going to change it. 
First of all, they did something very illegal. According to the Elections Act, very illegal. They offered all of us a bribe. If we vote for the HSD, some of you will get a $175 one-time payment. You've already paid it. It's just getting some of your money back. But you must vote the way the government wants you to vote in order for you to get it. According to the Elections Act, that's a bribe. If anyone here did that, you'd end up in jail and you'd pay a $20,000 fine. But the government, they can do anything they want. We've heard that before. We're hearing it again. So then they say, oh, but we'll knock it down two percentage points. But it's going to be over three years. We'll have an election in between. And the government today may not be the government then. Or something may occur that requires them to keep the money for other purposes. But we're supposed to trust them again. It's all about trust. So we have a problem. Now I'll tell you, I don't mind a business getting a benefit from a tax. That's not a problem. And obviously that's what the government set out to do. But in this change, they reduced the corporate income tax, or they increased the, corp increased the corporate income tax by two percentage points. And they're saying, see, business is paying its way. We're good guys. You know who's going to pay the two percent? Not business. It goes on to the consumer. You'll end up paying the two percent any time a business assumes another cost, and that's fair enough. We know that in advance. You're the ones that end up paying it. So I don't mind, however, business getting a bit of a break. That's all right if it's going to create jobs. But it bothers me. It bothers me no end, and it's one of the reasons why I continue to fight. That somehow the guy that's shipping raw logs near where I live, across Blaine to Bellingham to be milled and cut into boards, or that's shipping it out of Kitimat by the barge load to China to be milled and cut into boards, that I have to give that guy a tax rebate from you, the taxpayers, and me? That bothers me. Or when I phone my cable company because I'm not that good with the computer, and if something goes wrong, I phone and say, how do I fix it? And I get some guy in Nova Scotia or Prince Edward Island, better than India, but still, it's somebody far away that answers the telephone. And I have to give that guy a tax break. I have to pay him back his taxes on the equipment he buys to use someplace else. No, that bothers me. Or General Electric, a big American company, putting all these run-of-the-river projects throughout the province and selling hydro or power to BC Hydro at more than BC Hydro can sell it for. And I have to pay him back, and you have to pay him back. We all have to pay him back the tax they paid on the equipment or whatever it is they bought. I don't buy that. I don't like it. I'll fight it. So we have a problem. And uh, I guess perhaps more than anything, too, we need to realize that we, fortunately, in this province now, unlike anywhere else, perhaps in the British Commonwealth or certainly in Canada, have an opportunity as a people to do something about it. We actually have a chance this time to say to the government, to say to your representatives, the people that you elect to give you a voice in Victoria, to say to them, look, you're there for us. We pay your salaries. We pay your benefits. We pay your fat benefits and pensions. You do as we wish it, not how your party or your leader wishes it, or your philo philosophical outlook happens to be. So therefore, folks, you have a chance this time like never before. Vote yes to extinguish the HSD, save democracy, and save your money. Thank you to uh, both sides for their opening comments. We'll now move to the part of the evening where we give each side an opportunity to rebut the arguments that they've heard in the last few minutes. Uh, each side will have five minutes in order to do that, and we will follow the same order of presentation as we did um, for the first part of the, of the evening, and I'll ask that uh, one of the representatives from the Smart Tax Alliance will lead off. So uh, thank you, Bill, for your uh, uh, 
uh, information. Um, further to what uh, Bill has said, I just want everyone to be thinking about where we're going to be in this province if we don't have businesses doing well. If we go back to a PST system, we have hidden taxes at every stage and we as the consumers end up paying for that. So if our businesses are not successful and competitive then we don't have jobs and we are not able to live in this province and if you're not working right now um, then it is even more important because you have your investment of your home and uh, your your everything around you so if if BC businesses are not successful we all will lose on that and who wants I really want everyone to think about going back to a system where the PST is a, a cost at every stage and it, it is if you think you're not paying PST on something you are because as Bill said if a business has increased costs they pass it on to us so if we have a more efficient tax system that doesn't have increased costs, we will realize the savings either through more jobs or through lower prices. Um, Mr. Van Der Zem's speech was very emotional. <coughs> I understand that. I think it's really important that we take some of the emotion out of this and look pragmatically. <laughs> and, and, look, and look pragmatically on, on what makes sense for the future generations in this province. I think it's really important. Um, the HST system creates a more competitive business environment. He talked about jobs leaving this province, going down to the States, going to China. The reason we want competitive tax policies is because we want those jobs in British Columbia. Uh, in our particular industry, Ontario has got the HST. We will stand to lose 20% of the film industry in British Columbia as a result of the dollar being high and that 7% which we get back on most goods and services um, that used to have the PST on them. That is what's keeping the business going right now is that difference in the HST. So that savings is creating an additional 20% of the jobs that we would not have in this province in our industry and we spread money throughout the economy um, to hotels, to restaurants, um, to as many businesses as I can think of that we spend money. And one particular feature film, um, Superman, which is coming to the province right now, um, that employs 850 workers, and this is a job that was bid throughout the United States, uh, throughout the world, British Columbia landed it. We've got a company called Pixar, um, which is only located in one other location outside the US, and it was Vancouver after doing a worldwide search. The reason they did, competitive tax policy. It is real. And this is an important decision for all of you. Thank you. I'd just like to add a short comment. I, was, I found some of the argument a little hard to follow. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Van Zandt. Um, provincial sales tax is bare, bare and simply a sales tax. It's a consumption tax for goods and services consumed in BC. It's got nothing to do with things happening in Belgium. It's got nothing to do with stumpage fees on lumber going out of the country. It's got nothing to do with resource taxes. We're talking about a very simple provincial sales tax on our goods and services here in BC. Thank you. Got it. So I now ask uh, that uh, the uh, Smart Tax, uh, sorry, not Smart Tax Alliance, <laughs> the I now ask the Fight HST side uh, to begin their rebuttal. Well, the Smart Tax Alliance wants us to believe that uh, we should be listening to economists and dealing with facts. So we'll, we'll do that a little bit right now. Uh, economists in British Columbia told us that the HST was the single best thing we could do for our economy. Not just that it was a good tax, but it was the best thing we could do. It was going to create jobs and it was going to lower prices and stimulate the economy. When the HST came in on July 1st, 2010, unemployment was 7.4% in BC. Today it's at 8.8%. That's a loss of tens of thousands of jobs. So there's a fact for you. Then when we saw that the thing was collapsing and that prices were going up or staying the same, certainly not coming down, the line became, well, you got to give it time. Give it time. All right, let's give it time. The HST, they tell you, is a new progressive tax that all the people in the world are going for. We had the PST in 1949. Well, guess what? The HST came in Europe 
in 1954, five years after we got our PST. So that's how new it is for you folks. They've had it for 60 years. And what's the net effect of the HST or value added tax in Europe? Well, the Eurozone is collapsing before our very eyes. Greece has defaulted, Ireland has defaulted, Italy, Spain and Portugal are going to default and France and Germany can't afford to pay it anymore. Why? Because the economy has been driven underground by overtaxation, which includes the VAT, which is now averaging 21% throughout Europe. So that's how good the economists have been. But closer to home here, not one economist in British Columbia told us that the HST would collect an additional $850 million to the provincial government that they said wasn't. They originally told us it was revenue neutral. It was a $2 billion transfer from the corporate sector onto the consumer. It turned out to be $2.8 billion. You don't even need to be a forecaster to figure that out. You just need to look at the numbers. But not one economist could do that and tell us it would cost $850 million more. The HST is a bad tax, and even the government admits that now. They are saying they're going to cut the rate by 2% and give everybody back a little bit of the money they gave them, and they think that's the fix. So they, they're on our side now. They admit it's a bad tax. The debate is no longer about whether the HST is good or bad. The debate is about whether, how do we fix it? The government says we fix it by overtaxing you, continuing to overtax you, but giving you back a little bit back, not quite as much as you gave them. That's their solution. Find me one economist in the world that's credible, and not hired by the BC Liberals, by the way, that says, yes, good tax policy is overtax the people and refund them a little bit back. That's not tax policy. That's not economics. That's raw, naked politics. And it's a bribe, and it's against the law, as Bill pointed out. The HST does not work. The solution, when something doesn't work, is to get rid of it and start over again. We've had the PST here as long as they've had the HST in Europe. We've had the HST in the Maritime Provinces. How is it done there? Well, Newfoundland has 12.5% unemployment, the highest in the country. Nova Scotia Newfoundland, and uh, New Brunswick are in the 9.5% range, also the highest in the country, and they have the highest per capita debt. It's so bad, Nova Scotia now upped the HST to 15% six months ago, from 13%. Terrific tax, folks. Now, the provinces with no HST, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba, are booming. They have unemployment rates in the 5% range. And you've got to wonder, if you listen to Smart Tax Alliance, how do they do it? How can they possibly have a good, healthy economy without this fantastic tax that's killing Europe and the Maritimes? So we're supposed to have that tax, and that's supposed to save British Columbia. It's a bad tax. It's a very bad tax because it transfers the burden from corporations onto consumers. You're robbing from the poor to pay the rich. We're not against giving businesses a tax break, but as Bill said, give it to businesses that create jobs here in British Columbia. Don't give it to everybody and, and their dog. And by the way, I'm a farmer too. And I've never paid PST because all farmers and manufacturers in BC had a PST exemption number. So I don't know why this farmer is telling us that it's such a terrific tax. You just put in your rebate from the government and you got your PST back. They could do the same here. And they could do it for businesses like farming and manufacturing where the jobs are created here. The HST doesn't work and they have to mislead you by saying things like it's a choice between 10% and 12% in order to somehow think they're going to get everybody to go for this. But we all know the HST applies to hundreds of more items and services than the PST did. Vote yes to extinguish the HST and save your province, save your money, save this democracy by holding the government to account. Thank you. Okay, now we're now going to move on to the question period. And as I mentioned to you earlier, I'll first start taking some questions from the floor. Now, I've had a chance to talk with the speakers earlier, and, and they've all agreed that they will try to keep their responses to the questions between one and two minutes in length. And I would ask that as you are asking your questions that you try to do the same so that we can get as many in as possible. Now, we have some uh, microphones uh, that are, are, are uh, mobile here. And what I'll do is 
uh, the questions will be collected. So, I, folks, if you can pass them along, Laurent, to the people there. Thank you for reminding me of that. Um, the questions will be collected as well. Any more questions? Put them over there. No, written ones, I meant. Okay. All right, so the way it will work is this. We'll get your question, and you can direct the question, as I said, to any individual or either of the two parties of this debate, and then we'll give the other side an opportunity to respond, and we'll move on to the next question, okay? So um, who would like to have the first question? This gentleman over here. The microphone is coming to you, sir. Can you hear me? My name is Al Romanchuk. I'm a resident of Kelowna. And my question, very simply posed to the smart tax people here, is if the tax is so, the HST is so efficient, can you tell me how many civil servants have been relieved of their financial portfolios with the provincial government as a result of harmonizing the tax? Okay, so who would like to take that question on? So with the switch to HST, uh, the provincial government was able to uh, eliminate a, a number of jobs. I don't have the exact number in front of me, but we can find it in our report. Um, they were able to eliminate a, a huge number of jobs. Some of those jobs have been absorbed by the federal government, but by the provincial government eliminating that extra layer of uh, tax auditors, they're saving additional money. So, so that's another savings to the BC uh, province I by not having those people. I think it's also allowed small businesses to focus on their business instead of filing two different types of tax returns at a fairly significant cost and uh, you know running a small business it was quite complicated uh, uh, on PST to file those returns um, if you ran a complicated business. Uh, Mr. Delaney said it was a very simple tax when he was on a farm. Um, I would encourage him to avoid a tax auditor if they come in if it was that simple. Mr. Delaney. Thank you. Uh, and would you care to respond? Sure. Yeah, sometimes it's not very easy to avoid those auditors no matter what you're doing but anyway. Uh, I can tell you the number of uh, provincial civil servants that were let go as a result of the HST, 2,500. And all 2,500 were hired by the federal government to collect the HST there. Now think about that for a minute. The HST, the GST has been collected now for 20 some odd years at 5%, it was 7% before that. You've hired 2,500 more people to count the exact same amount of purchases except now you're multiplying by 12% instead of 5. What do you need 2,500 more people for? All they did was transfer the burden from British Columbia to all 10 provinces in Canada. So it's not efficient, and we're still paying, albeit maybe not as much. But that's the actual number. You know, it's just one washing, the other washing, the other hand. They're not saving any money, and that's the bottom line. Okay, thank you. I'll take a question in the back here. On. I have two questions, if I may. We'll take one now. Take one? One only. Okay. Uh, there's 150 countries in the world have a value-added tax system. I'd like to know, and there's, there's one major country that does not have a value-added system, and that's the U.S. The U.S., uh, President Obama had indicated a desire to start looking at a value-added tax system. Some people in his cabinet uh, the next day actually told him maybe you better hold back. It's, uh, it's not a great idea. The U.S. also has $14 trillion in debt. So we can think about how bad their economy is. Their debt per capita is almost double what Canada's per capita debt is. The question I have for the fight HST is how can they say 150 countries in the world, most all, all but one of the Organization of Economic Development countries, all but one, which is the U.S., how can all these countries be right when they say it's an unfair tax? Okay, thank you, and we'll try to get back to you if we have time later for your second question. Who would care to uh, answer the question? 
Well, the U.S. debt is terrible. That's not what we're talking about today, but the European debt is even much worse. And I agree that obviously there's a move, move afoot to make this universal. I mentioned that before. I think there are forces in this world, I don't know where they are or what they are, that would like to see globalization. And this fits globalization. So if Canada at some points wants to join in with the US and Europe and have an HSD, a VAT tax, then I guess that'll happen unless we the people stop it. Now, how can a tax that you pay, you're gonna pay $2.8 billion more. That's $400 for every man, woman, and child in the province. Now, I do a little shopping. You all do shopping. I don't know how the average person keeps up anymore. The prices are going crazy. It's not just the gas station. It's not just the grocery stores. It's everywhere. Prices are going crazy. So how is that good for you? Prices going crazy and taking $400 plus from every man, woman, and child in this province to transfer it to business or otherwise, here or throughout the world, how can that be good for the people? And the people need a voice. Business always has a voice. They always have a voice, and they have the resources, the money to put behind the voice. The people need a voice. Finally, we have a voice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I agree with, with Bill's comment about the world becoming a, a global place. Uh, I have a, a client that's uh, just starting out and they already, uh, you know, their first year of revenue was, was not even $50,000 a year, but that's already including sales uh, outside of BC. It's a reality that we're in a global economy. Um, every business uh, starting out will be uh, expanding their markets at some point. So it is important that BC businesses be uh, competitive. And also to uh, Bill's point about uh, why why are we concerned about uh, uh, paying this tax the we're we're concerned about having a, a fair tax system so that we can compete with other uh, other countries, other uh, provinces. We don't want to see our jobs going to Alberta or to Ontario because they have an HST. so so it is important that uh, uh, BC, is uh, aware of the impact of the tax, as Peter was saying about the uh, jobs that are created just in one industry, the, the number of jobs that come to BC as a result of a competitive tax system. Hey, I have a question at the back here in the run UBC. Check, one, two. Uh, my name is Grayson Lepp. I'm uh, actually a recent UBC grad. And I guess my question is to the HST side, or the no side. Um, you mentioned a lot about, I, th I think it's Peter, sorry, I missed the first part of your, your, your conversation, but uh, one of the topics that came up a lot with in your speech was um, about the film, the film industry, increasing jobs in the film industry. I've currently spent seven years in the restaurant and food and service industry, and since the HST has come in, especially in Kelowna, in this general region, we are a very, very resort-oriented tourist attraction area. We rely on these restaurants for our income, our jobs. The restaurant industry has plummeted due to this tax. The restaurant industry has is, is, is failed in a lot of parts. Just from speaking with my Cisco reps, from May to July, we've seen sales go down by 25%. Now, I don't... I, I'd just like a little more information, I guess, on how these jobs are coming into play, because here I am. I have a degree in business. Um, my degree is uh, marketing and strategic management. And for the life of me, I can't find a job in BC with that, with reference letters from the DVC of the school and the AVP of students, and five years experience with the students' union, and experience in the restaurant industry. Okay, yeah. so I think the question was um, really directed at jobs within the hospitality industry and how the HST impacts them. 
Well, certainly I think we should address um, the restaurant industry because I think it's a, <coughs> certainly an important industry for the province. Historically, what they've seen in other provinces with when, with the introduction of HST is uh, restaurant business has gone down. I mean, you've kind of got the triple whammy here in terms of minimum wage, which, you know, I, I think we all agree. It should have been staged, but, you know, we all want to see a minimum wage go up um, over time. And unfortunately, it's all kind of coming one year for you. You've got the HST, you've got the minimum wage, <coughs> and then you, you also have the uh, liquor laws change, which I think had an impact. Um, the one, in, I mean, there's one advantage on HST in terms of liquor and that the 10% provincial sales tax is now gone, so it was a combined, um, you know, the, it, was, it was the GST of 5% and 10%, so 15%, which has gone down to 12 on, on the liquor side. Um, but um, I think historically what we've seen is you'll see the jobs come back and, and the people coming back. And, and I know our industry, if, if we're employed, we use the restaurants a lot. Our, our particular industry uses it a lot. And so if we've got jobs, we're going to continue to use it. Um, I think over time that you'll see the jobs come back. Um, restaurants do have the advantage of getting the input tax credits on on the HST where they didn't before on the PST when they were purchasing their equipment and, th and those things. So there are advantages. Also, um, if you look at somebody that say uh, is making a chair, um, he has goods that go into it, the, the wood or whatever, and then he has the labor that goes into it and he's subject to HST. Um, in, in restaurants, you have food that goes into it and you have the service that goes into it and they weren't subject to it. Um, the economy's changed in British Columbia. Back in 1948 when it was introduced, we were more of a manufacturing economy. Now we're a service economy. Um, the sales tax or the VAT tax is a very important um, tax for the province's revenues to support uh, education and health care. And so it has to be spread over more goods and services than it was before. And I know it's going to take a hit uh, initially for these businesses, but you know what we've seen in other provinces um, is that it does come back. And so um, it's just a sort of a shift, but you'll see it come back. And the other side. Yes, go in there. So uh, the HST, we're told, was going to create jobs. The C.D. Howe Institute published a report on the HST saying that it would have a negative hit on the economy of British Columbia for up to five years and could take as long as perhaps 10 years to fully recover on the employment level. So you're going to see job losses for the next 10 years, maybe starting to creep out at year seven coming back. The independent panel that the Smart Tax Alliance likes to quote also said that you would not get hundreds of thousands of jobs created. Over the next 10 years, you might see a net of 24,000 jobs created. That's 2,400 jobs per year. When you're losing 20,000 jobs a year right now, that's within the margin of rounding errors. But let's take a look at what we get for our taxes. We're going to pay over that 10 years, if we go ahead with the tax, about 24 to $28 billion more in taxes. And you're going to get 24,000 jobs. That works out to $1 million per job. That's a real good investment, isn't it? I mean, do the math. This tax is crazy. Thank you. Okay. I'll take one more question from the floor, and then I'd like to get a couple, if I could. So, uh, gentleman over here. Th thank you very much. I appreciate your comments. My name is Maury Williams. I've been a resident of the Okanagan and Kelowna for some 35 years. I'm undecided, and I must admit I'm still undecided. Um, the group on the left, um, I'm not in business, and uh, all your comments have been for business. And over here on this side, I've heard mainly negative reasons why I should not uh, favor the HST. So I wonder if I could pose a question to both of you. It's the same question, Jim. I wonder if this side over here could give me three good reasons as somebody who is not in business as to why I should vote to keep the HST. And I wonder if this side, if you could give me three positive reasons why I should go back to the PST and the GST. Okay, do you want to start? Take start. Well, you know, th that, that's, that's an excellent question. And, and the reason um, I think it's a good question is because I don't think it's, uh, I don't think that's been asked enough. And I think that goes to the basis of it. Um, the reason we pay taxes is to have government providers with services. 70% of the tax dollars that are collected by government go to health care and education. And guess what? We're all getting older and health care is getting more expensive. So these are really important services that differentiates us from other economies. Um, and, the re and the reason that we've got the benefits of those is because we've created jobs. Um, if 
my wife's a teacher, and the reason she benefits from this is, first of all, her wages are paid from tax dollars collected, and also she benefits from the wages of myself, who's in business, and my colleagues who are in business because we pay taxes to the government. So if you've got an economy that's going to be competitive and it's going to create jobs, you're going to have the benefits of those social programs. And otherwise, if we have no jobs, there is no programs. There is no wages for teachers. Um, you know, we need to have a strong economy to be able to support those social services. I'll give you another reason. Um, the province is going to collect a provincial sales tax one way or the other, whether it's through PST or through HST. At the moment, it's the same amount. It happens to be just about the least of any provinces in Canada. And it is the most efficient way to collect that tax. So it's going to cost the BC government a lot less to collect that tax for itself through the HST than it does through the PST. So there'll be more money left for universities and all the rest of it that we need here. Thank you. Well, I was busy trying to f narrow it down to three because I've probably got about 30 reasons, but I'll give you the top three. It'll cut your cost by $2.8 billion a year. That's $400 per person, okay? Per family, it's about $1,200. They keep quoting this $350 per family figure. Do you know how they get that? They get that by discounting the amount of money you will pay by 90% in HST. They're telling you that 90% of what you pay in HST will, will be passed back to you in savings by business. Well, you've had it for a year. Have you seen 90% reduction in cost? Forget it. Second one, it'll lower prices on hundreds of items. The HST applies to everything now, including services. And they mentioned that we're now a service-based economy. Makes a lot of sense to start taxing services then, doesn't it? That makes no sense at all. And the final one is hold your government to account. If you want more lying, more betrayal, and more deceit from your government, then vote to give them their tax. Because if you think by voting to give them what they wanted, after them delaying and using every technique in the book to try to keep this tax despite an overwhelming rejection by their own people. If you think you're going to get more democracy and more responsiveness from your government, then you're kidding yourself. This government will be rewarded and they will learn that all they have to do any time they lie is wait us out long enough and we'll cave in. Uh, the other side made mention of the fact that we need more money for health care. Of course, that's now being said. That was never said when they talked about a revenue neutral tax. But they're now saying this. Fair enough. We know we always need more money for health care because if we don't keep feeding money to health care and some of the other programs, the people at the bottom will get laid off and the top will keep growing. And we don't want that. But aside from that, I think what we're really concerned about government doing, and that's perhaps why they didn't mention it, is we built a stadium in Vancouver for $125 million during Bill Bennett's time, $125 million. Now they're putting a $600 million retractable roof on this stadium. In Vancouver, mind you, where you never retract a roof. It's okay, just, uh, I just remind you, Please, if you could just let the speaker speak. I think at this point I am going to um, move on to one of the written questions because we've had quite a number of them come in. Thank you, Maury, for asking the first question that I had written down. So that's done. Um, I have a question here that says it's a question for Peter Leach. The question is this. If HST is defeated, why can we not redesign and incorporate the best of both HST and PST? Why must it be an either or? First of all, it's very, very expensive for businesses to flip flop back and forth on a tax policy. It's, it's, ex no, it's, it is. It's extremely expensive. Okay, because you have to implement all the different systems to incorporate a new tax. All of a sudden, if we go back to PST, you've got all small businesses that are going to have to set up all those accounts and figure out what's PST exempt and what's not, and it's very complex that way. Um, also, it's going to take, if we go back, it's not an instant fix. Um, we've got an agreement with the federal government. It's going to take two years to go back. 
Can you imagine the uncertainty it's going to create? And in our particular business, we don't have that long. Our projects are usually anywhere from three months to maybe a year for a huge feature film. And guess what? That business is going to be gone. It's not going to come back. The infrastructure, which is a billion dollars of infrastructure in the province in that particular industry, will disappear. And that's a, fi that's a reality. Um, so we can't be flip-flopping back and forth. I think the HST is a good system. I don't think it's a perfect system in terms of, of how it's been implemented, but it's certainly a much, much better system than the PST. Okay. One more? May I add to that? And with the whatever number of people that were let go by the province that don't have to do the auditing anymore and all the rest of it, and I'm sorry, but it was not 2,500 that went to the, to the federal government. I don't know what the right number is, but it certainly wasn't that much. Those people all have to go back in and be retrained. They have other jobs, and I know some of them who certainly are no longer in working for either government anymore. Uh, so it would mean amassing all of that all over again. And it's just the other issue is, is the longer we go on with this debate and nick around with it, the more uncertainty there is. You have a lot of problems right now in the construction industry. People are not building houses. They're not going ahead on decisions to build houses because they're not sure what's going to happen on, on HST. The uncertainty does none of us any good. Well, if the uncertainty doesn't do any of us any good, then taking two years to unravel this tax sure isn't going to help our certainty, is it? I mean, can you imagine the devastation on businesses then? Who's going to build a new house for the next two years when you know the tax is coming off, you just have to wait? No, that's, that's a red herring. This tax will come off so fast it'll, it'll make your hair curl because the government knows they will never win another election if they keep bleeding the taxpayer for two more years after we vote this tax out. It took them about three months to implement it. You're going back to a system they already know. It could take them three weeks if they really wanted to. Here's the reality. The flip-flopping back and forth, we're in that situation now because of the government. When the people signed the petition, we went to the government and we said, okay, let's get rid of it, let's get business certainty, let's build the economy. And they said, no, we want to create a pressure cooker. We want to push people into a corner so you fold. You fold. You give in and give us our way. They don't care about business. If they cared about business certainty, they would have said, we hear you loud and clear. It's the largest public opinion poll ever done. We've made policy based on opinion polls of 800 people. You've got 700,000. We hear you loud and clear. But they didn't say that. But if you're asking what is a better policy, a better policy would be to go back to the PST and begin phasing it out one or two percent a year for the next five or six years like Alberta and have a win-win for business and consumers. And nobody can tell me that British Columbia with all of our resources, larger population, better climate cannot be competitive with Alberta. Okay, I'm going to do uh, one more of the written questions and I'll come back to the floor in just a moment. Uh, this one is directed to uh, Bill Vandersdam, um, and the question is this, will the purchase of used automobiles, boats, and RV, I think it says equipment, um, be taxed at the old rate of 7% PST only if we revert back to the GST PST system and successfully scrap the HST? The government nor the Smart Tax Alliance has made any mention of the tax on automobiles and boats, resales, etc. No. No mention's been made because that is strictly a provincial tax. The HST is strictly a federal tax. This is a provincial tax. So it also indicates that if the government wants, they can institute a new provincial tax, even though we already have the HST as a federal tax. Yeah, they, uh, they've not mentioned that, and I imagine uh, even if the HST were adopted, heaven forbid, uh, you would continue on with 7% on used automobiles or boats and the likes, uh, unless they change the legislation, but not likely. I'll, I'll provide a comment to that. So um, there's always been 7% uh, PST on used automobiles, boats, uh, everything, uh, when they were sold privately. When you purchase those uh, vehicles and boats through a dealer, you would pay uh, the PST and the GST. And so the consumption tax is, as Bill said, a provincial tax. And it was brought in as a result of the... Um, the motor vehicle associations 
wanting to ensure that they were competitive with uh, private sales. So, so the incentive now to buy a vehicle privately is, is no longer there because of this 12% uh, consumption tax. But there's always been a PST on used vehicles and boats. So, so that was, was here before. And the only reason that this consumption tax came in was to, um, for the Motor Vehicle Association. But that's not an HST. Thank you. Thank you. Now, there was a, a woman who has been very patiently waiting here in the second row in. So if we get a microphone to her. That would be appreciated. And just in case you're wondering how much more time we have, we probably have about another uh, 10 to 15 minutes before we'll have to look at wrapping up. I'll get to as many of you as I possibly can. Go ahead. Oh, hi, my name's uh, Tisha Kalmanovich. And actually, I'd, I'd just like to uh, refer to uh, Peter. You mentioned whammies that people have been hit with, uh, a number of whammies. That, uh, you said. A, you know, with the HST and, and other things that have been going on, but actually people have been help, ha hit with a lot of whammies over the last two years. The HST was just one. And so, again, referring to this gentleman here, we're not in business. A lot of us are, are just ordinary people. So my question is, what about ordinary people who don't have livable wages or no wage, are unemployed, who are already challenged by high cost of food, and commodities, high unemployment, increased medical user fees, and lack of affordable housing, as well as a lot of indirect taxes like the carbon tax. That's, that's us. Tell us how it's going to, I don't see it. Thank you. Yeah, th thanks for that question. Under the, under the HST, there's a much more significant rebate um, for low-income earners than there ever was under the PST system. Um, so you'll get a rebate check quarterly um, under HST, which you, which is much larger than you would have under the PST system. So, um, and, and also the rate's now going to go for most goods and services. Um, I'd like to, you know, when you're leaving this room, please fact check um, what Mr. Vanders and Mr. Delaney are, are saying. That's all, that's all I really have to say about that. Just please fact check what they're saying because, you know, I think there's a lot of inaccuracies there. Um, so it's the lower income people that actually benefit most out of HST and are penalized under the PST system. Uh, the HST is much fairer. Um, also, of course, um, seniors uh, are going to get the one-time rebate of the $175 if they make $40,000 or less. Um, but it's, it's really that the, the rebate is going to make up the difference quite significantly for for uh, low-income earners. Well, it's easy to uh, check the facts. You can just count the tax you're paying yourself. You see, they deal in theories, we deal in reality. I'll give you a good example. At one of these debates, we had a person say, ex uh, tell a story about in 100 Mile House, the local taxi cab company had to fold up because of the HST. And the answer from the Smart Tax Alliance? Well, theoretically, that shouldn't have happened. I'm sorry, it did happen. This, we're living with it. You're paying the tax. You know what it does. Rebates are an admission that prices do not come down. If prices came down, you don't need a rebate. You'd be giving the government a rebate. So go ahead and fact check. We, we encourage that. I've never heard so much misinformation in my life as come out of the Smart Tax Alliance. That's not very smart. But they think that they can buffalo it, and if they put it on the television and say it over and over again, we're all so stupid, we'll just look and go, yeah, all that money I'm paying, I'm not really paying. But we know we're living with it. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman in the blue striped shirt. Hi, thanks. My name is Eric, um, and I'm an accountant, and uh, I run a small business as well. So. When I'm talking to my business clients, I have no problems um, educating them on the advantages over the HST, over the, uh, the previous GSC, PSC system. It's a pretty easy sell. And from a business owner standpoint, it, it, the, the, the uh, refunding of the full 12% ITC is, uh, is obvious to me. However, when I'm explaining the difference between the HST GS and the old system to uh, people that aren't business owners, such as my friends, the I'm always struggling to explain to them what the advantage is under the HST, and I keep coming back to the fact, well, under the old system, there was embedded PST all the way down the value chain, and then it got to you, and you had, as a consumer, you were paying all this embedded PST on top of uh, other PST. And under the new system, you, the businesses are getting the ITCs, so 
the, uh, the tax is in embedded, it's being pulled out uh, throughout the supply chain. And so they always in invariably come back with, okay, well that means to me that uh, prices should be dropping. And you know, we've heard tonight that there's not really much evidence that prices have dropped. So my question is, in countries that have switched to VAT tax or in the provinces that have gone from a PSD to uh, an HSC system such as Newfoundland, is there any evidence anywhere that has said that after a certain period of time prices have dropped for the consumers? So are you directing the question to one side or other or both? Uh, either or. Okay, who wants to go first? Okay. Um, there, there is evidence that prices do drop. Um, in the Maritimes, they were able to show that within the first two years, prices did come down significantly. But the, the other thing that individuals that aren't running their own business, um, the other way that they benefit is, is that they, they're working, so if they have a, a business, not only can lower its prices, but if it's uh, retaining more of, of what it's making, it's able to invest it in the business by hiring more people, by spending more money on infrastructure, and that's how um, people that don't run their own business benefit from that, because because you have a job, you're working, and when you're working, you can spend money. And whether you're a senior or, or an employee, um, having businesses do well benefits you. Thank you. Well, the independent panel says that uh, you're paying $350 per average family in additional HST because they're discounting the amount you actually pay by 90%. They're telling you that 90% what you pay in HST will be discounted to you in the form of lower prices from businesses. Well, if that were true, that would leave 10% net HST to the business, a 10% benefit. And after tax, that's 7%. Now, how can you create jobs and stimulate an economy and buy new equipment and everything with 7% of your rebate check of the HST? You can't have it both ways. You don't get to reduce prices by 90% and then have a ton of money left over to stimulate productivity. So it's one or the other. Prices are not coming down, they're keeping the money, and they're not reinvesting it. But you know, the HST was invented by a French bureaucrat in 1954. And instead of having a flow-through system, a very simple system of rebates like, uh, or sorry, exemptions, like we had here with PST exemptions for manufacturers and farmers, he decided to create a flow-through tax system so that in a supply chain you have five, six different people handling the same tax, all having their own accountants, all calculating it, all remitting the differences to the government to either get a refund check or submitting the difference in money. You've created a massive bureaucracy inside government to manage the HST, even though for the average uh, business it might be simpler to have one form. But you've got this gigantic bureaucracy. You can eliminate the whole thing by simply having a business number you give to the people in your supply chain and they exempt you. This is a ridiculous system. We researched and we said, well, why would they do that? And the answer by this bureaucrat who created it was, that way every business has skin in the game because they've been conscripted as tax collectors for the government and they have to get the money if they want to get the refund check back. So it will reduce cheating. But what's happened, the entire economy has gone underground, not the entire, but massive portions of the economy of Europe have gone underground, and they're losing revenues. In the UK, they lose between 20 and 30 billion dollars a year in VAT fraud. It's a disaster. Okay, thank you. In, in the other part of your question with respect to a tax on a tax, yeah, I think that needs to be changed for sure, but it's not likely to happen soon, because if you looked at your BC Hydro bill lately, you'll notice that you're paying HST on the carbon tax. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to do one more question that's been written in, and then we may have time, depending how long they take to answer, uh, we may have time for two more questions before we'll have to wrap things up. Okay, so um, this question um, is directed to the no side, and the question is, how do you propose to deal with poor students or poor single people? It is better now for elderly and families, but as long as essentials are taxed, the poor are being taxed. And I actually have the answer here, but I won't read that to you yet. <laughs> so who would like to start? Well, it's the essentials are not being taxed. And if you look at this, this is the consumption tax. The wealthy people will be paying more 
pro provincial sales tax, they always have. Food is still exempt, rent is still exempt. All the basic things that you need in the lower income brackets are not nearly as much affecting you as, 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 if, as the wealthier people. Do you want to say? Uh, Kevin Falcon has two children or three children and they're under 18. He earns a pretty good salary in government, but he's going to get his rebate check. And so will Christy Clark get a rebate check. But, and that's okay. But there are a lot of poor people, and the students are certainly an example of that, that will not be getting a rebate check. So it's not all that equal. Okay. Just uh, let's have, try to control the questions through me, please. This gentleman in the very middle has been waiting patiently, so perhaps he could ask a question. Yes, you, but you'll need a microphone. My question is, if we are creating jobs, how come one of you said jobs will come back? You're contradicting yourself. My question is, what is the true answer? Okay. Um, who would like to start on this one? Well, I'll start, because I think <coughs> if you're addressing the restaurant industry particularly, what I said is that it's shown in the maritime provinces, for instance, that th there was a, a setback in terms of the business that the restaurants got, but it picked up again. So now it's, um, and, and if you look at the statistics on it, it shows that it, it hasn't suffered over time. Uh, initially, it was did take a bit of a hit. But in general terms, we're, we're talking about creating jobs in the mining sector, the forestry sector, the manufacturing sector, the film industry in the province. In major industries in the province have to be competitive. It's a global marketplace out there. And if we're competitive, we're going to get more of those jobs and then more of the support jobs, more of the restaurants, and, and we're going to have a stronger economy to pay for our social services. We also have to remember that the last few years, the, there's been a worldwide recession. So uh, you, we can't say that uh, every lost job is, is a factor of HST. There's been a number of factors uh, affecting the world economy, um, and Canada has done very well overall. So um, we're, we're in a very good spot, and HST will only make this province stronger. Chris? Well, she's right, we're in a world recession, and rather than climbing out of it like the rest of the world, we're climbing back in. So at 7.4% unemployment, when HST was first introduced, it's now at 8.8% and climbing. Tens of thousands of jobs lost in the restaurant industry. People who were full-time are now part-time. Part-time have been laid off. Construction industry is down. Uh, people are going underground in the construction industry and everything else. So it's actually hurting us. But like I say, we can look at the experience in Europe. All of the countries in Europe that have the HST, the value added tax, there's, an, there's dozens of countries that have unemployment in the 12 to 14 percent range, and youth unemployment is particularly acute. It's in the 40 to 50 percent range in countries like Ireland and Spain, and that's for people between uh, four, 16 and 24. So there's huge problems with this tax. It doesn't create jobs. I think we can all agree, at least it doesn't create jobs. Maybe it's not responsible for these this unemployment. Maybe there's other factors coming in. I think it has a bearing on it, but I'll concede that point for the sake of argument. But we can say it certainly isn't creating jobs. There's no jobs boom where it comes in. The jobs boom in Canada is in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba, who don't have the HST, and they're at 5.5% unemployment. And we're killing ourselves. Somebody going to tell me we can't be competitive now with Saskatchewan? This is crazy. 24,000 jobs over 10 years at a cost of $24 billion, $1 million per job. Why don't we just give everybody a check for a hundred grand and be done with it? Okay, I'm going to take two more questions, and I'll take one here, and then one woman in the back in the middle of her hand raised at the moment. So, first of all, over here. Yeah, I think you need a microphone because it's being webcast. I came here tonight to to hear both sides, and I'm undecided. So, I'd like to repeat that gentleman's question. Three reasons to get rid of it, and three reasons, again, I'll give you, because I only heard two and they weren't very good. Um, to, you know, before I leave l tonight, I'd like to hear once again, please. 
Would you like to take that question now or save it for your final minute? Go ahead. Okay. Okay, well, why don't I just give one simple reason? Going from 12% to 10% on the majority of, of goods. The government's going to collect it anyway, and this is a cheaper way to do it. The HST benefits uh, lower income families, and that's a good reason to, to keep the tax. It, 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 all the essential services, food, fuel, medical, are not subject to HST. So having an HST benefits uh, the average family. Okay. Um, heating is not, Bill? residential heating is not subject okay. to HST. It's Let's only subject to the 5%, <laughs> not the 12 Thank you. Let's uh, move over here for so one of the responses. One of the best reasons that we can get rid of this tax is to stop the lying. The lying from the government and all of their conduits who stand to gain billions of dollars at our expense and want us to believe that it's a choice between a 10% HST and a 12% PST when we all know that the HST applies to a much broader range of goods and will cost us $2 billion, $2.5 billion more per year. You'd have to lower it to 8%, not 10%, to get it to what we paid under PST. And even then, you'd be giving control of your taxation authority to Ottawa. The HST is a 100% federal tax controlled by Ottawa. We have to give them four months' notice under the agreement that we want to make a change to it. And if they agree, they have two months to respond. And if they agree, they can renegotiate the rate. In the past, we fully controlled our taxation. We could go into the legislature and in three days, we could exempt bicycles or whatever else it is we wanted to help stimulate our economy. We could redistribute the tax if we wanted into the regions so that we could build transit in uh, Vancouver and something else up here, a bridge if we want. We could do any number of things that we wanted and we're giving that up. And as was pointed out earlier, it doesn't mean that a new government coming in, any government, couldn't create a new provincial sales tax on top of the HST. We have the TDP, which is the tax on private sales. Now it's called the tax on domestic property. It's a provincial tax, and the 5% that was never paid before is now paid to Victoria, and they're taking two to $300 million more per year in a little tax grab for themselves. Okay, thank you. So the uh, last question then goes to the woman over there. Yes, you, if you could just indicate to the microphone holder. Um, and I would apologize while we're waiting for the mic to get there for not getting to all of your questions, uh, but we do have a time limit and we are going to have to wrap things up. However, I think it's probably fair to say that these folks will be here for a few minutes and might w what would be willing to entertain a informal discussion you might want to have with them either here or out in the lobby um, afterwards. Go ahead, please. Okay, my name is, can you hear me? Can you hear? Okay. Yep. My name is Teresa Bond, and I think one of the reasons that we got so many people initially signing the petition to not have the HST, um, I think from hearing people today, we're here because we want it clarified to us, and I think when it was the HST was initially introduced, it was even more confusing to people. When I heard about the tax, though, I didn't, I didn't think so much about having, a, having a, like the HST. I thought about people who in BC were just fed up of being taxed because the government thinks we have an unlimited pocket that is deeper and deeper all the time. So what I am going to ask is not so much about having an, 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 an HST or a GST, but instead I want to know where the government is starting to cut back so we don't have to have any debate at all or any increase to taxes at all. Okay, so I don't know that we have anybody who can speak on behalf of the government, but I'm going to ask these two groups if they'd wish to comment in response to your question anyway. So who would like to go first? Well, I'd certainly say if we could strike oil really, really in big quantities, we wouldn't have to have any provincial sales tax. Uh, <clears throat> you know, you, you know I, I, think, I think we're all feeling the pinch of higher taxes and higher costs of living, and, and uh, um, it's a struggle for everyone. Um, what the HST does, though, is it does create jobs for people. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about that. that the, the, all of the economists agree on that particular fact, that it does create jobs for the economy. If we have jobs, then we can generate more income for the government. Um, the revenue side of it, um, you, the way you want to collect revenue as a government is you want to make it so that it's the most effective 
type of taxation uh, to make sure that you're creating a healthy economy. On the expenditure side, that becomes more of a political issue, although, as I said, 70% goes to education and healthcare right now, so the government has 30% to play with. And one of the things that we want to do is we want to have a balanced budget. Uh, I think that's extremely important because otherwise we're going to pass our costs, our debt onto our children and grandchildren. So I think that's important. So I think, yes, the government has to tighten its belt um, to keep our costs down, but there's a reality that we're going to need, you know, a, a pretty significant amount to cover those major things that we talked about in education and healthcare. Thank you. Well, it's not a matter of cutting. I guess perhaps some might argue that it's perhaps a way of managing more efficiently. It seems that every time the government has a problem, they lay off certainly and cut back and it's always at the bottom, it's never at the top. The top keeps growing and gets more expensive all of the time. There are a lot of things that we're paying for today that perhaps are questionable. And one of these might be, for example, the highway to Whistler, great, beautiful highway right now, but it was built for the Olympics. You know what happened when the Olympics started? They closed the highway. You could only get there by bus. So we've seen a lot of money wasted, and I guess perhaps that's why we're paying for it now. Sure, there's a deficit, and, and governments should try to manage their money more efficiently so that we can avoid the deficits. And certainly, uh, the Business Alliance should be aware of that and should be passing that message on to government, far more than putting on another tax. I don't know of any business community anywhere in this country, or for example, or on this continent for, for that matter, that would be telling its government, tax us more and things will get better. That just doesn't happen, folks. We have a long way to go and we start with going back to where it was we were, we managed very well. We have more resources in this province than any other province. We have more natural gas in this province than anywhere on the continent. We probably have more oil than most provinces. We just haven't drilled for it all yet. We are a resource-rich province. Now, keep in mind, too, that when that oil company or that natural gas company or the copper mine or the logging company gets that tax rebate, uh, they're, uh, they're not going to lower the price of oil or gas or anything like that. It just won't happen. But now, in the past, with the PST, when they exported that ore to some place to be milled or exported those logs for some place, heaven forbid, but it's happening, to be cut into boards or two by four, it was the people at the other end that paid the HST if it was calculated into the price. They paid the PST. Now you're asked to pay the HST. The tax is put on you, the consumer. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> And that, uh, that brings to an end the time that we have available for questions. Uh, we'd like to end, though, by giving each of our presenting sides an opportunity to make a few final comments of approximately a minute apiece. We're going to reverse the order of presentation from the beginning of the evening, and I'd invite Fight HST to give us a one-minute wrap-up, followed by the Smart Tax Alliance. I think this is an extremely important time in the history of this province and of this country. The whole country is watching because for the first time anywhere in this country, the people in fact have a voice. Now if we, if we vote to keep the HST, heaven forbid, then I think the message to government, not only this government, any government that follows regardless of what its stripe, will be you can promise whatever you want within an election in an election to do or not to do and you can uh, you can move whatever you wish no matter what your constituents think you can do as you want it and if you wait long enough if you outweigh the people they'll give up and you'll get your way we have a chance to reverse that we now have a chance to really practice democracy such as we've never seen it before in this province or country so vote yes Vote yes to extinguish the HST. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your family, tell everybody. Vote yes to extinguish the HST. Thank you. Peter? Well, thank you. And I, and I want to thank everyone for participating tonight because I think it's really important for us. 
Um, what each and every one of us is going to decide is, is a really important tax policy. So, you know, I hope that you spend the time to gather the factual information. Um, I didn't understand half the things those guys were talking about because it didn't make any sense. And I'd encourage you, I'd, I'd, I'd encourage, no, I would encourage you to get your own facts. I'm not saying to take my facts. I encourage you to go get your own facts on this. This is important tax policy for jobs. Um, this is important for our children, for our grandchildren. It's going to make the difference between a healthy economy in this province where we can afford the so social services that we need and the difference about, of going backwards to a 1948 tax. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I am very sorry, but the uh, ability, the uh, ability of the no to HST side to uh, confuse, obfuscate, and terrify the public with absolute baffle gab is really very sad. And, and I, I would like to actually, I'll just pass this over to Mr. Delaney. We were, he was talking about the fact that, uh, that all farmers have no PST on things because he could file for an exemption. Here's a whole list of things that are taxable. It includes trucks, barns, all kinds of things. So if he'd like to refile his tax return, there it is. But, but the new, the new HT, HST system is fair and simple. It's a method of collecting tax. It's a very simple debate that we should be going through right now, not a, not a whole bunch of stuff about world economies and all the rest of it. Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. We've got a much better system that the government has adopted. Let's just keep it. Okay, thank you. Now, first of all, I'd like to ask the audience to join me in thanking the five fearless speakers who have come out here this evening. <laughs> it's not an easy task for anybody, no matter what their views, to, uh, to do what they've done this evening. And uh, I think we all owe them a debt of gratitude for continuing the discussion on this very important topic. Now, for those of you who would like to, I would encourage you to follow the discussion, and you can do so at www.hstpublicforum.ca. You will also find uh, links to Facebook and Twitter, and videos of tonight's forum will also be on YouTube. Um, remember to vote in the HSC referendum, and watch for your ballots in the mail, which will be starting on June the 13th. Thank you all very much for coming out this evening. I hope you found this informative, and I hope you will continue to uh, pursue this issue in your own way. Thank you.